You and I talked, Andrew, about Trump's attorney, Jonathan Mitchell, what he said about January 6th. I want to actually listen to it and then talk about it on the other side. There needs to be an organized, concerted effort to overthrow the government of the United States through violence. And this and so riot the point is that a chaotic effort to overthrow the government is not an insurrection? No, we didn't concede that it's an effort to overthrow the government either, Justice Jackson. Right? None of these criteria were met. This was a riot. It was not an insurrection. Okay, mul multiple points there, which is that would seem to ignore the planning that went into this, the fact that this wasn't just any day at the U.S. Capitol. This is the day when there was supposed to be the certification of an election. And that distinction between violent versus chaotic, I, I don't really understand what they're driving at. Look, this is, I'm with Neil on this, okay. which is that the, this is an area where if you are representing Trump, you want to steer Stay far away from this because you want to win um, sort of the legal battle, but you do not want the Supreme Court, even just an oral argument, to be pressing on, you know what, you may have a legal point, but you know what, don't talk to me about this not being an insurrection. Um, and so you could have had a, the justices, even justices who, you know, think that they, legally this, there was a problem with what Colorado did, really saying, but factually, there was a determination here. There was a hearing. That we lived through this. Everyone watched it on TV. So steering away from the facts, <laughs> you know, was a, was a smart move. And to Neil's point, if you're on the other side, you need to be focusing on those facts and saying and you know, talking about what exactly happened and sort of steering it to your you know some part that's that's useful um i think you know here katanji brown jackson is one you do not want to wrestle with i mean she once again i think was very much a sort of star in this hearing i mean just making really good points really tough questioning i think it's very good for the country to see mm -hmm. justices who are viewed as either liberal or conservative um, asking really good questions that seem completely apolitical and very focused on text, history, um, why would this be done, would it even make sense, um, and looking at even the, 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 re the result that could occur and then saying, if that's the result that could occur, there's all this chaos, is that really what could have been intended at the time? So I thought it, from a, you know, this is you know, the law school professor in me, is it's really useful, I think, for the country to see a body sitting, you know, especially the Supreme Court, which has rightly at times been attacked for how it's operated, to see them operating in a way that is asking bipartisan smart questions of both sides. Neil, you know, we, we talked about what the Trump team didn't want to talk about, so let's talk about some of the arguments that Team Trump was advancing, including the point they're making that Section 3 does not apply to Trump because he never took an oath, because he never entered political office before becoming president. At one point, you have Jonathan Mitchell saying, it does seem odd that President Trump would fall through the cracks, in a sense. Uh, too convenient for the justices that, that this argument only applies to Trump, that in the words of Sotomayor, it seemed like a gerrymandered rule. Yeah, so first of all, before answering that, I just want to really echo Andrew's point. I think it's so important for the country to see an oral argument like this, to see what I get to see often when I'm at the court, which is nine people who are bringing their A-game, asking really hard questions of both sides. It astounds me that we don't televise these things, because I think it would be just a momentous thing for the country to be able to see this and not just listen to it uh, with audio, which is cold and hard to understand. With respect to Trump's argument, yeah, I think many observers thought going in that Trump was going to push this argument that the president is exempt from the 14th Amendment. That's what actually the trial court did in Colorado, is say that. Um, it's always been a weird argument, and I think Jonathan Mitchell, the Trump lawyer today, even acknowledged it. It creates some weird absurdities that the most important person isn't covered by the 14th Amendment, and others were, even though the founders of the 14th Amendment had people like Jefferson Davis um, and the like in mind. I think Mitchell, the Trump lawyer, was smart to really actually downplay that argument. He certainly answered the court's questions mm -hmm. about it focus more on this different argument, which sounds technical. It's about whether the 14th Amendment is self-executing. And what he's basically saying is Congress needs to pass a law to set up the procedures by which the 14th Amendment would be enforced. And no one state can do it on its own. And that then picked up 
uh, the concerns of the Chief Justice, Justice Kagan, Justice Alito, about how one state shouldn't be able to run the show when it comes to a national presidency. If I had to guess, I'd suspect we're going to see some version of that argument. And Trump's lawyer advanced a, a quite narrow one based on this old case called Sea Clamors. If I had to predict, that's where I think the court's going right now.